by way of a short introduction, I would like to present to you the most uh, afraid man I have ever known in my life. I've never known someone who was so afraid of his destiny. Uh, Brother Jackson called me this week and said, uh, Pastor, I, I don't know. I don't know. I said, what don't you know? He said, that's just it. I don't know. I said, well, what's the problem? I mean, this thing about being in church is a tremendous responsibility. He said, you know, I think I'm an evangelist. I think I'm supposed to go around and just speak. I said, well, Brother Jackson, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. You know, this thing about trying to build a church, I don't know. I said, Brother Jackson, you are afraid. Because you know that you don't have the skill, you don't have the knowledge, you don't have the wherewithal to build a church. He said, well, why do you have me doing this? Because you can't. Only he can. What you're afraid of is your own shortcoming. I said, everybody has to go through this. You know what it is to preach to a whole bunch of empty chairs? When you thought you were all that and you invite people to come and nobody comes and all of a sudden you realize it's not your ability to speak. It's not your ability to be charismatic. It's not you. But when you lift Christ up, he will draw all men unto him. They said, well, what am I to do in the meantime? I said, as you gradually move out of the way, one or two people will come and fill the seat. But fear not, little one. For he has heard your cry. He has prepared you and prepared a place for you so that you might be a willing, able, and an effective vessel for him. And so his fear began to subside and his enthusiasm began to grow. Brothers and sisters, here, live in Columbia, South Carolina, here he is, the afraid, scared preacher Reverend Donald Jackson, let's welcome him. Thank you for all who attended. Those who travel long distance, those who travel short distance. I am glad to be here today. I thank you all for being here. I thank you all who have helped propel me, push me in the direction in which I believe that the Lord has place for me. Okay, Amen. I don't like to deviate from the program. Okay, so we usually start out the program with a call to worship. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye, lovers of God, those loved by God, worship him in spirit and truth. Let us sing a joyful noise to his adoration for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I was glad when they said unto me, come, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you all for your attendance. I give praise and honor to God, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I like to acknowledge all the clergy, all the helpers in the churches, and the ecumenical family, brothers and sisters, husbands and wives, friends, and family. Thank you. Thank you for being who you are and what you are in God's sight. Praise God. Amen. 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 Okay. We're broadcasting live. We're broadcasting live from the Epiphany Ecumenical Church. I'm glad you're here to worship with me. Amen. This is such a marvelous day. This is a day which people don't really give the respect of the day that is due. This is the day that the Holy Spirit came and dwelt in the believers. All in the Old Testament, which is history. It came in and out. It came upon those who he tried to relay a message to the people. But Jesus... Jesus in all his omnipotency, in all his glory, he prayed the Father that he would send us something to comfort us. 
Surely he left, but he said, it is expedient that I leave, that I go away. For if I don't go away, the comforter can't come. Oh, praise God. See, we got to understand this comforter, this Holy Spirit, this helper. See, it has a whole lot of manifestations in itself. And not only has a whole lot of manifestations, it has a whole lot of gifts. A whole lot of gifts. A whole lot of gifts that we take for granted. A whole lot of gifts that we don't even know about. A whole lot of gifts that come from faith. As we grow in faith, you understand? Then he gives you more gifts. Well, we get on through this sermon today. The sermon today will come from John. John 14, 25 through 27. These things I have spoken to you while being present with you. Jesus talking. The helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Let's stop. I, 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 uh, let's stop right there. Let's stop right there. I want to tell you a little story. It, 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 some might even think it's a little joke, but it's, it's a little story, right? Okay. A pastor was walking down, down the street one day when he noticed a very small boy trying to ring a doorbell that was too high for him on a very large house. So the pastor looked, and it was across the street, and he looked, and he see the little fellow trying to jump up, and he trying to ring that doorbell. He was trying to ring that doorbell. So the pastor stopped, positioned himself, crossed the street, and came up behind the little fella and placed his hand on his shoulder. Reaches up, hit the doorbell, solid ring, ding dong, ding dong. So the pastor stops, he stoops down to the child's level, now, so you ask the child, right? Now, what it is that we need to do? He was expecting a response from the, guy, from the little child saying, I'm trying to see this person, I'm trying to see this person. The little boy looked up at him and said, now nah, we run. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. Now, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit been recognized in the Old Testament and the New Testament. And it's different manifestations. The helper. As we identify the helper. The helper is one who assists. And, and we can go back into the Old Testament. Uh, we can go in Psalms. And talk about this helper. Like in Genesis 2.20. For Adam no suitable helper was found. The wild animal but still no helper. So he's talking about the woman that was created, the help mate. That's a helper. Then in Psalms, David said, Oh Lord, be my helper. Oh Lord, be my helper. Psalms 54 4. But God is my helper. The Lord keeps me alive. Behold, God is my helper. The Lord is the upholder of my life. So that's one of the manifestations of the Holy Spirit. Then there's the comforter. And throughout the book, Lamentation, Jeremiah, Israel was under great siege. And so, Jeremiah prayed for the comforter. And he says, who, you who are my comforter in sorrow and heart, my heart is faint within me. Lamentation. For those things I weep, my eyes flow with tears, for a comforter is far. Now I'm going to tell you about this comforter and has it, has it, how it related to me. When the Holy Spirit came to me, I couldn't recognize it. You know all of us who've been baptized 12, you know, at a young age. And it's after you going through the process, you will receive the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen? But can we recognize the Holy Spirit? At the age of 12, I couldn't recognize the Holy Spirit. 
I had to become a middle-aged old man. And then you know how the Holy Spirit manifests itself to me? The Holy Spirit said, he didn't say, but I will bring all things into your remembrance. You see, I will guide you in all truth and life. So when I recognized the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, I was fearful. I was scared. I was death struck scared. Because my life, my things I've done in the past, flew before my eyes. All the things I took for granted. All the things that I, 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 I was just wandering, you know, caveat through life. But at the age of 12, 10, we was on a fishing journey. I fell in the water and couldn't swim. All the big boys, they done ran on down the stream because they wanted the best fishing spot. I had to fend for myself. The women who were behind me, they couldn't swim. I'm 10 years old and can't swim. I don't fall in this great big pool of water. You know? But God, through the Holy Spirit, say, I saved you. I brought you out the water. When everybody else came back, I was on the other side. You know? And then, at the age of 12, I was ran over by a car. A big black Cadillac ran over me and my bicycle. You know? When they was looking for me, they said, oh, Lord, the lady down the street, she said, oh, Lord, he's been hit by, the, he been hit by that car. They're looking around, me, where he at? Where he at? I had to crawl from underneath the car. So scared, ran in the house. Hide myself. God said, see there, I saved you again. You see? So I didn't understand. He had gave me the Holy Spirit as a comforter, but I didn't know at that age. I couldn't recognize it. So as I, I grew older and grew in faith, then he was able to show me, and I was still afraid. Because they say, you understand, when you're about to die, they say your whole life passes for you. You see, I said, oh, Lord, am I about to leave him? You know, but no, the Holy Spirit was letting me know that God was with me all the time. I just didn't know. You see, and then the Holy Spirit is one who gives strength, who gives hope, and he consoles. You see, so we should pray to the Holy Spirit to give us strength in faith. Because in strength and faith, we can do God's work. Without faith, regardless of how much we do, we're going to plateau out. We're going to plateau out. But you put the Holy Spirit in there, then God will take you to where you need to be. Right? For his salvation, for his praise only. So the Holy Spirit is a, a sacred thing. You see, and then as we define Holy Spirit, it's a spirit spiritually pure. You see, it came from God. It's spiritually pure. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, all around you feel their face because it's a pure from God. And you have to worship God. You have to worship God in spirit and in truth. So when you get on your knees and you pray to God. I used to fall asleep. I get on my knees, I pray to God, I would fall asleep. You see. I would ask, I wake up, I close out in Jesus' name, I pray. Oh, when I got to, to pray, I would do the mundane. The mundane things, the same old thing to keep passing by and passing by. You know what I'm saying? We get to, we go and we lay down. No, we get on our knees and pray. And we say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. But we don't wait for an answer. We don't thank him, praise him. We're just going through the motion, you see. But you got to talk to him like he's your best friend, you know. You got to talk to him like he's the love of your life, yes. and he is, you know. But these are the manifestations of the Holy Spirit, you see. The Epistle of James. The epistle of James 3.17 speaks of the Holy Spirit as a wisdom 
from above. It is first pure, then it's peaceable, it's gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy, good fruit, without partiality and without hypocrisy. That's how James described the Holy Spirit. Meaning that whole, the Holy Spirit has no respect of status quo. No respect of person, president, you know, popes, bishops, preachers. Holy Spirit don't have no, 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 no preference like that. The Holy Spirit, those who believe in God, is granted the Holy Spirit. Their spirit ain't no more spirit than yours. They might have a little more strength in their faith, but the Holy Spirit is what we're trying to grab hold to. It's the Holy Spirit. You know what I'm saying? That's what we need to invite in our lives. You see? So a tithing ain't going to make you, a tithing ain't going to give you the Holy Spirit. You got to believe that Jesus is the Son of God. He came and died for our sin. You know? And then we can receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. All right. If we turn to Acts 19, 2 and 7, this was a time after, actually, this was when Paul, the, Holy, the Pentecost, the day of Pentecost had already passed. The day of Pentecost had already passed. And Paul was on his evangelical journey to the upper region of Corinth, up around Ephesus. That's Acts 19, 2 through 7. Okay. And he was finding some, di some disciples, some of the disciples of John the Baptist. See, John the Baptist uh, um, that baptized so that they might, for the cleansing process, should we say, but he said, there's one who will come after me that will baptize you in the Holy Spirit. Now, after all this time, those are possible with the teaching of John the Baptist waited in their heart and believed it. You know, that the Holy Spirit would come. So when Paul made his journey to that region, he asked, he asked them, did they receive the Holy Spirit? Because when the Holy Spirit came to the upper room and all those who prayed in one accord received the Holy Spirit. But that was also the time that Holy Spirit was introduced into the world for everybody. And so that's when Paul asked him, did y'all receive the Holy Spirit? They said, no, we didn't receive the Holy Spirit. We didn't even know there was a Holy Spirit. You know? But they still had faith and believed. So John baptized them in the name of Jesus. And then he laid hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. You see, when you get so, when you get uh, 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 strong enough in your faith, they got to give you the gift of laying on hands where people can receive something. They can receive the Holy Spirit. And at that time when he laid and, and, and laid hands on them, they began to do as the, the people on the day of Pentecost. See, they began to speak in tongues. They began to prophesy. You see. Now, isn't that something though? But look at the way the Holy Spirit has grown up. Now the Holy Spirit is the same. But the minds of man has grown up to a maturity. At one time, and I'm sure y'all can go back and remember with me, the Holy Spirit would come out in the churches and the people would run through the churches. They'd tear off their clothes, you know, because they did not know what to do with that supreme energy that came from God. You see, they just run around and do a thing. But now, as we maturing in our spirit, we're settling down. We now know how to make the Holy Spirit effective and useful in our everyday life. You see, now we've grown up to the point where 
People can pray for you in the Holy Spirit, and you can be healed. You see, it didn't have to be the apostle. It didn't have to be the apostle. Now people can, because they've grown in, in strength, in faith. They can lay hands on to you, you see. They can prophesy for you, you see. All these manifestations of that good old Holy Spirit, people are making it now to a point where it's, it is useful. It's becoming more godlike. When you're running around through something and tearing up your clothes, it seems, it appears to be a little more satanic. Well, people say, well, <laughs> well, people say, uh, uh, well, well, um, David, they like to use that, right? Oh, David danced out his clothes for the Lord. Isn't that right? Isn't that what they say? Well, I say this. Saul had migraines to the point of where his head was split open. And David, he would get his heart and sing and praise unto the Lord. And the Holy Spirit that come to David, Saul was able to benefit from it. Amen? He was able to benefit from it. So now, with the Holy Spirit comes gifts. And it also comes caution. It comes caution. Mark, Mark 3, 29. But whosoever blaspheme against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. Will never be forgiven. Ain't that something? You can do anything. Murder, rape, whatever it is. It doesn't matter. You can be forgiven. But if you deny or if you blaspheme against that Holy Spirit, it's over with. It's done. It is done. You are guilty of eternal sin. And one minute, one minute. Because I want to, I want to show you, I want to talk about, tell you about something else. The spirits, you see. See, there are many spirits. You know, but what it makes it holy, what makes it the spirit of God, is when it testifies of Jesus Christ. When it testifies of Jesus Christ, then it's a Holy Spirit. But there's many spirits. Peter, Peter and his disciples ran into him. The lady was the divine spirit who was able to protect the future, speak on the future. But it wasn't divine. And, he was, and, and, and she was crying out in the street behind Peter. And, 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 and Peter said, now this lady here going to get us in trouble. You see what I'm saying? And they cast that spirit out of the woman. See? So not only is the Holy Spirit, it's the supreme spirit, but the Holy Spirit is above all other spirits. So God gave you a gift, something to get you into heaven, because you can't pray without the Holy Spirit, because he said, God is spirit. Amen. And you should worship him in spirit and in truth. Isn't that right? Oh, praise God. So when you get down on your knees, ask the Holy Spirit to come in with you. And then you know you got a direct communication with God then. That is your vehicle. That is your avenue of getting there. And so you sit back and you wonder, well, Lord, I pray. I go to church and I pray, but, but uh, ain't nothing coming to fruition. You see, but you might not be close enough. It might not be your due season. It might not be his will at that time. Amen. You see, so, but man, I'm going to tell you, I get on my knees. I praise God. I ask for everything. You know, I ask for everything. You see, now it might not be the will of God at that time that I receive it, you know, but I don't ask him. I don't communicate with him, Amen. you know, and, 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 and so he, he, he said, well, now, I know there's a point in time that I would come in a due season, but I feel closer to him. I don't feel like I'm Verizon. Uh, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? No, I don't feel like that no more. I know I got the Holy Spirit with me. And with the Holy Spirit with me, you see what I'm saying? I know I got a direct communication with him. Amen? Amen. 
Oh, praise God. See, we got to pray in the spirit. We got to ask things in the spirit. But we got to be a little cautious too now. Because we got to, we got, we got, because when it comes to you, we'll be a high man and, oh, well, uh uh, that of my own accord. No, that's a blessing because you asked the God for it. And he blessed you with it. In his due season. You see. Now I'm getting ready to wrap this up now. I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to step on up out of here. Okay. But for all the believers in Jesus the Christ, all of us believers, you see, let us pray to be strengthened in faith so we can be closer to him. And so that what we ask for can come out in a little fruition, you know, maybe a little bit sooner. You know, before we forget about it and ask for something else, like me, I don't know, ask for something else, you know. And may the Holy Spirit teach us, guide us, you know, stay close to us, you see. For there's so many pitfalls out there, and there's so many things that can make us deviate. But we got to keep Jesus, we got to keep God in our forehead, you see what I'm saying. We got to keep God and Jesus in our heart. We got to relate. Uh, how can I say this? We have to be actively engaged with him. You know. We got to be that what we are, a child of God. You know. And we got to, we got to stay with him, you see. And 2 Timothy says, to God... The good deposit that was entrusted to you. The Holy Spirit. That was the good deposit that you received after you went through the protocol, you know what I'm saying, of what Jesus said as a standard. You must be baptized. No, first of all, you must believe in God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. You must be baptized for the cleansing of, for, for, for the cleansing and for the remission, receiving God for the remission of his sins. Jesus. You see. And then you be able to receive the Holy Spirit, you know. And 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 maybe we should use it not sparsely, but plentifully. You know, we, we, we want to drink from that cup as often as we can. Because we know that the spirit with us, then we got a, a real good possibility that God is here in us. Amen. So brothers and sisters, I appreciate you coming. I appreciate you listening to what God put on my heart to say. And I, I thank you with my with the utmost. Right. So brothers and sisters, I leave you, I leave you as I came. Love, peace, and prayer. Thank you for coming.